I'm Jan Kotze. I'm a growth support of Hall Creek South Africa. I'm standing here today in Demo Field Paul. I'm going to demonstrate today um, some pruning techniques on the variety FCM 14052. Uh, the name Sequoia Pop. It is part of our commercialization platform Sequoia. First, some background overview characteristics of the variety Sequoia Pop FCM 14052. The plant has a semi-upright growth habit. It has vigorous basal growth and this basal growth requires adequate thinning and selection of basal canes. Pruning strategies for Sequoia Pop FCM 14052 would be first when to prune. Well, in the Southern African region, one would prune as soon as possible after harvest, which is roughly mid-October in the lower latitude areas like Zimbabwe and Namibia. In October towards early November in the northern parts of South Africa and then mid to late November in the southern parts of South Africa. Pruning steps for a variety Sequoia Pop FCM 14052. Firstly, you need to sanitize your pruning secateurs. Use a fungicide and spray the secateur. Do this before and after each prune. Pruning steps would be remove low growing thin wood. Consider to remove older canes that have grown too flat to be used as future frame canes. Sequoia Pop FCM 14052 is very basal dominant and vigorous and one need to select some of these and remove some of these basal canes to give a good balance of frame canes for future use. To start by removing the current year's growth and also all the thin thin wood. So I'm going to start cutting back to the secondary secondary shoots. Prune back to 8 to 12 frame canes which either has one or more secondary shoots which can continue as a starting base for new season growth. These canes would preferably be at least pencil thickness or more. Cut the secondary shoots more or less 15 to 25 centimeters, which is roughly second tier length. This will allow for enough cane length to support three to five new secondary shoots. In cases where you've got shoots that's crossing over one another, that one going that direction, that one in that direction, it's preferable to remove one of the two. In this case, it's best to, to remove the lower lying one. Remove shoots that's growing towards the inside of the plant. So we've got a situation here where we've got shoots that's on top of each other. You've got, you've got more than one option here. You can either consider to remove these or you can consider to remove the bottom one or just this one. So this is one option. You've got shoots growing here. It's still underneath that one. You can remove this shoot if you want to or you can remove that shoot completely. I'm going to choose to do this. With pruning, the aim would be to create new growth points for following season on various heights and positions. And what we would call uh, to aim for here is an open vase structure. It's almost like a cup shape where you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frame canes with two to three secondary shoots on these frame canes, two here, three here, and they will present new growth in this area and they will allow, it will allow uh, good light penetration to the inside of the plant to either stimulate new growth from these frame canes or from the crown. And this structure would allow one to maintain a good healthy uh, and balance regrowth versus production over the long run. In the case of a younger plant, the indication would be to look or aim for 8 to 12 points of these points. Let's count on this plant. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we are on the upper level on this plant. We've got good quality shoots. 
So if you are on a lower density, you can leave this plant as is. If you are on a higher density, you can still thin out some of these. So I'm just going to remove this one for the sake of uh, demonstration. And I am not going to remove that one, but I'm going to remove this one and keep these two. Higher densities of 6,000 plants per hectare or more, uh, one would consider to leave less of these points and aim for closer to 14. And in lower density plantings of say 4,500 to 5,500 or so, you can leave more of these aiming towards closer to 18. So the result of the pruning one would expect on these secondary shoots uh, for three to five buds to break and grow into a shoot like this. Now in lower latitude areas, uh, the tendency for Sequoia Pop FCM14052 would be to grow more dominant shoots. And it would be beneficial to consider when these reach 40 centimeters or longer, which is roughly around about here, to do a topping action like that for a shoot like this. I'm just gonna demonstrate it again. So it's basically almost like two pruning shears, secateurs to a topping like that. And the aim or the reason for doing this would be to actually to promote feathering or secondary shoots on that shoot, which increases your complexity of the plant and also your bearing positions. Now in higher latitude areas, um, this dominant shoot growth, the tendency of that is less so, one would expect, and the feathering would be more. But even if there are still some dominant shoots, it would be beneficial to do the same action. I do caution though, not to do this too late in the growing season. Uh, otherwise, you may delay your fruit timing. Um, so in the lower latitude areas, it would be advisable to consider around week two to four at the latest. And in higher latitude areas to uh, consider in the region of week four to eight. In the higher latitude areas, it may still be beneficial to consider this action, but less so. The expectation would be less apical dominant growth and more secondary shoots but microclimate, type of cover such as net and plastic, fertilizer strategy, long rainy periods or overcast periods may result in stronger vigor and hence more dominant shoot growth. A guide would be week four to eight. Additional pruning advice. In preparation for pruning, lower the fertilizer input two to four weeks before the planned pruning date. If you have high drain ECs leading up to prune, consider to stop fertilizer application completely for this period. Continue with pH adjusted water irrigation, similar to new plantings. Continue without fertilizer until the onset of the new vegetative growth. Lower irrigation volume three to five days before the day of prune. Adjust irrigation schedule downwards as soon as possible after prune. Plan to keep substrate or soil wet but take care not to over irrigate. Take care not to prune on extremely hot days as far as possible. Do fungal applications before and after prune. Continue with normal fungal management practices after prune. In very hot climates, keep one to two flag shoots to enable the plant to continue with evapotranspiration after prune. Remove them when new growth are more or less five to 10 centimeters.